Welcome to the How to Beach channel. Today I'm coming to you from the actual beach. Hopefully it's not too windy and you can hear me okay. I'll try to edit out some of the wind in post. But today I want to talk about the truth about living in St. Thomas. I've been here for over a year now and I've got it pretty much figured out. So I want to share some of my thoughts on some of the good and the bad and just tell you what the actual truth about living here is, what I've learned after the last year, I'll give you some tips on what it's like. I'm going to get into the video right now. Okay, I'm going to jump right into it. Let's just talk about the elephant in the room. St. Thomas is not a cheap island to live on. This place costs a little bit of money and you get these beautiful beaches in return. So let's talk about some of the expenses, what it's actually like to live here. Um, we'll start with housing. The truth about housing expenses are if you want to get into a single family house that has like that sits up high, that has great views, um, or you want to be somewhere close to a beach that you can walk to, you want two or three bedrooms, you're probably going to look at starting prices around six hundred and fifty to seven hundred thousand dollars. So that is a pretty big chunk of change for a lot of people who want to move to an island. So if you're thinking about retiring here or moving here and you want to get a single family house, that is the kind of number you're looking at to get into, you know, something that that's just kind of that's pretty much 700 is probably the average starting price for a two to three bedroom house. What's your second option? Your second option is to get into a condo. There are a lot of condo options you can get into, but a lot of the condos on the island, you can't finance them. So you're going to have to pay cash for those condos. So if you want to get into a condo, maybe you want to downsize in your life, you're you're retiring or you want something a little bit smaller, condos are a great option, but just know you're probably going to have to pay cash. And the average HOA fees on the small one or two bedroom condo are going to run you in the $1,200 a month range. So that's something to consider. And power is also not cheap on the island. Uh, when I first got here, I rented a one bedroom, two bathroom condo, and my first power bill was over $400. And we were trying to keep the windows open as much as we could and keep that power bill down. So that's something to consider also. So it's a little bit spendy. The housing costs are a little bit spendy, but that's the main expense that's higher. Everything else is a little higher, but not that much. You know, groceries overall, you're probably looking at uh, an extra 20% from what I used to pay in Florida. I lived in the panhandle of Florida up on the north part and the Gulf Coast, and it's less expensive. It's not the same prices as probably Miami or West Palm Beach or something like that. So I would say my, Overall grocery bill is probably about 20% higher. Um, actually, if you're a drinker or you like liquor, liquor is probably the cheapest thing on the island, especially rum. Rum is the most affordable uh, spirit you can get on the island. I'd say it's about 10% less than what I paid in Florida. And beer, I'd say, is about 10% higher than what I paid in Florida. And if you're a wine drinker, I'd say the prices, wine prices are about the same as what I paid in Florida. So on the alcohol side, um, you know, that kind of depending on what your what your tastes are. Um, fruits and vegetables are more expensive and they're harder to find. I'm not gonna, that's a whole nother video on your shopping here, but I would just say expect a little bit, pay a little bit more for your fruits and veggies. You just kind of got to learn where to go to get certain things on the island. A next big consideration when you move to an island like this is your transportation. Uh, actually, the camera is sitting in the trunk of my Subaru right now. That is my tripod. So you got to think about what kind of car. You definitely need to bring a car if you're coming to this island. I just lost my light behind a cloud. I don't know how good my light was to begin with. Um, but transportation, definitely bring your own car. The good, depending on how much you're going to be driving, you know, a lot of people don't have to get into the nooks and crannies of the island, depending on how much exploring you're going to do. If you're just going to go from your house to the grocery store to one of the resort type beaches, you could get away with pretty much any kind of car. Um, but being a realtor, I have to get into all the nooks and crannies of this island. So I really toiled over what kind of car to bring. And I ended up getting a Subaru for a couple reasons. One, it's all wheel drive. And some of these roads are this steep. And then I'm going to try to turn a little bit so that the wind is blocked. Some of these roads are this steep. And when, if it's raining, you know, we do get lots of afternoon showers. So having the all wheel drive is a good option and it's skinnier for these skinny roads and it has good ground clearance. So I thought a Subaru was a great choice. Plus it's, it's nice enough. I can tote around million dollar clients in here and, and have a respectable looking car. Uh, a Jeep is also a great car and a Toyota Tacoma. Those are the three kind of the two, the two main cars on the Island are Jeeps and Toyota Tacomas. Here comes the sun back out, but man, it's getting more windy. <clears throat> so that is, you know, something to consider when you're thinking about bringing a car over here. Um, I wouldn't bring like BMWs or those kind of things. You do see some of them around, but trying to get those things serviced on the island would be a nightmare. And you're going to get dings and scratches and 
They call them island cars for a reason. I've been here 18 months and I have 10 new dents and scratches on my car that I didn't participate in putting on my car. So you never know where they come from. Okay, something else to talk about is island fever. Island fever can be a real thing. Uh, it doesn't really affect me very much. I lived in the wilderness of Montana for like 15 years. So I'm used to being out in the mountains or isolated and away from everything. So I don't really get island fever. I could stay here and probably never leave. Um, my wife is a little bit more prone to the island fever. She has to get out and stretch her wings a little bit. So it's easy to hop over to Puerto Rico. You can get pretty cheap flights over to Puerto Rico. It's uh, the middle of February right now. It's like 2021. Flights have gone up from what they were last year. Last year, you could hop over to Puerto Rico for about $59 each way. And this year now, because of COVID and whatnot, it's gone up. It's about $88 each way is the cheapest plane tickets you can get. But that's an easy trip over to Puerto Rico if you want to go shopping, go to Ross or go to Walmart, those kind of stores, pick up some supplies. And it's also pretty cheap and easy to pop over to Miami if you want to go over there and do some shopping. And then you can travel the world from there if you wanted to. But it's easy to hop off. But the only thing to consider about island fever is where do you want to go? You know, if you want to travel to Europe, you're going to have to make a few stops to get there. So that's something to consider. But it is easy to hop over to Puerto Rico, which has bigger, more shopping options and just get a little bit different scenery. Get some mofongo over there. And while we're talking about shopping in Puerto Rico, uh, you know, it's hard to find a lot of things in St. Thomas, but you can get pretty much whatever you want. You can order from Amazon. They'll deliver here. You just have to pay uh, shipping fees. Even if you have Amazon Prime, you don't get free shipping here. Um, Target supposedly delivers here, and I think Macy's delivers here. There's a handful of places that will deliver here. So you can get pretty much whatever you want. You're just not going to get free shipping. So again, you can have anything you want. It's just going to cost you a little bit more than what it would cost you in the States. So I guess the last topic that I'll talk about is entertainment. Um, you know, you better like going to the beach if you want to live on an island because their entertainment options are limited. There's no symphony. I mean, for the past year, there's been no concerts. The movie theaters closed. The bowling alley closed down for a while. I think it's back open up now. Uh, it's spendy a little bit, too, to go bowling. Uh, they charge you by the lane, by the hour. So if you have a few people, it, it prices out okay. But one of the best entertainment options that you have is hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done that yet. I do a lot of this content on what it's like to live on St. Thomas, living in the Caribbean. We talk about Puerto Rico. I do gear reviews. Actually, the reason you can see my cord today is because I just finished doing a gear review of this waterproof belt, which is a cool item, cool item for the beach. So I'll link to that up here. Um, but subscribe to the channel if you like all this beach stuff. It's all about the beach here at How to Beach. For your, for your main enter entertainment options, this is it. You're going to the beach. You're hanging out at the beach if you want to charter a boat. You can charter a boat, boat charters, you know, you're looking at, depending on how many people you get on the boat, you're looking at starting out probably around $200 per person for like a half day or a whole day charter to get out on one of these sailboats or speed boats and have them take you around, go snorkeling. You know, you can rent jet skis, you can do a lot of the touristy things, you can do parasailing. Um, but really, you're going to want to buy a boat if you're going to live here for an extended amount of time, um, probably to get into like a decent fishing type center console boat. <clears throat> They're a little bit more expensive here as well as everything else is. You're looking 20, 30 grand to get into something decent probably. Um, you know, sailboats, you know, you, the sky's the limit on any boat really, the sky's the limit. You just need, and then if you want to put it in a slip, you're looking at probably around $500 a month for a slip, depending on how big the boat is. Um, if you can find one, they're a little bit hard to come by too. So, but a boat is a great option if you want to get out and do some island hopping. Um, COVID's made it difficult to do island hopping. You can hop over, you can catch a ferry over to St. John very easily, take the car over there. We do that a lot. And you can fly over to St. Croix, relatively inexpensive for some quick little island hops. We used to be able to take a ferry over to Tortola. Tortola's that way. Um, that was really fun. We spent a couple days in Tortola. Once this whole COVID thing gets straightened out, island hopping will be a little bit easier and you can hop around a little bit and that's a really fun activity. It's not as cheap as we thought it would be, but it's a lot of fun. So that is your entertainment options. And so now I'll just wrap it all up and put a big tiny, put a big old bow on it for you. What have we learned today? We learned that this island is beautiful. I love living here. I've been here a year and a half. Um, it's not cheap. It's, uh, it's, everything's a little more difficult, but you get used to the island way. You get used to the island vibe. 
and it's more relaxed. It's just, it's a very cool lifestyle to be here, but it's not cheap and you're gonna have to pay to be here. There's cheaper islands you could go to, but um, a lot of them aren't as pretty as this. So that is what I think the truth about living on St. Thomas is. Leave me a comment down below if you've lived here or you agree or you disagree or you think I left something out or there's something else you want me to touch on. Tell me about it. I'll make another video about it. Please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you did enjoy this content and I will see you in the next video. Hey Poochie. Hi. What you eating?